I think we must be careful that we do not throw the baby out with the bathwater. And I think listening to Honorable Mazzoni, there are a number of elements that have been contained in these newly drafted rules that will have a positive effect on the way that we as members of parliament function in this house. And it will also enable us to ensure that our main responsibility over, uh, which is oversight of the executive is carried out in that manner. Well, it's taken a long time to come of age, 21 years, but at least we've arrived somewhere. And I agree with the Honorable Speaker that these rules are a living document. It's dynamic. It can be changed for particular circumstances as we move along. In fact, a number of the amendments that have been proposed in the last three years are as a result of particular circumstances that we found ourselves in this House. Otherwise, we would not have amended some of these rules. Now, having said that, Honorable Speaker, I noted that Cabinet issued a statement saying that they were very concerned, Honorable Minister Hadeba, very concerned about what the goings on in Parliament. And I agree with you. I think we've all said we're very concerned about what happens here. But by the same token, the executive need to know that we as members of Parliament are also very concerned about the way members of the executive sometimes react to questions that have been put to them, the nonchalant and flippant responses, the incomplete responses, and these are things that we need to tighten. And I think as Parliament, we have a responsibility as leaders of parties or as whips to engage with the leader of government business so that we can find a way. There have been proposals for unscripted questions. And I think the need, the reason for that is because of the way that we sometimes get a response from the executive. Today is a classic example. We found that when ministerial statements, 15 statements were, 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 were made by members of this House, and it took some prodding to get members of the executive to respond to those ministerial statements, and we still didn't get six uh, members that responded. But I think, uh, Honorable Speaker, there is a concept of parliamentary officers. Now, I've been here long enough to know the duties of parliamentary officers. We need to make provision in our rules for what parliamentary officers should be doing. They should be a liaison between a ministry and members of parliament, but very few of them, if any, conduct that responsibility in that manner. And that is lacking because we can get the kind of answers that we require from departments if, honorable ministers, your parliamentary, uh, your parliamentary officers are on the ball and interact with us as members of parliament. Having said that, we will support uh, the rules because we believe that there is an opportunity for us to have further discussions, but let's not dismiss good suggestions. Now, the last thing I want to say, Honorable Speaker, is you see, when you get this card here on a field of play, it means you are cautioned. When you get this card here, the IFP card, I mean the red card, the red card, it means you must leave the field of play, and this is something we need to learn. When you get this card from the presiding officers, you leave the field of play, but we must put in place some sort of review mechanism to review some of the decisions of the presiding officers. And we need to have a multi-party committee to do that, because even referees in a game of soccer, in a game of rugby, are also called to order even after you have left the field. The referee is cautioned by FIFA, whoever else. So we need to find mechanisms where we can find each other and work together. But as we say, we will support these rules as a way forward after 21 years of having the, the rules that we had in 1994. Thank you very much.